This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Dyson Sphere program video. Today we're going to talk about what to do with all that extra hydrogen. Let's get to it. So first thing is burning it. That's like the easiest way to get rid of hydrogen is just burn it in one of these thermal power stations. It burns relatively quickly and well. You can see here if we highlight over it, you get eight MJs of energy out of it and it has a fuel chamber efficiency of 100, but it only burns so fast. And what do you do when you have an abundance of it and it's backed up like you see here? Well, the first thing you want to do is wherever the hydrogen's coming from, you of course want to have it going into tanks. Each of these tanks can store 10,000. So you see here, 10,000, 10,000, and you can stack them pretty high. I can stack another one on top of this one if I wanted to. So if you look here, so right there, that's 30,000 hydrogen is a buffer system. So if you do that, it'll give you a nice buffer for all of your hydrogen to stack into before you begin to process it to help keep your system from getting clogged up. The other thing you can do with your additional hydrogen is run it into the fractionators and turn it into deuterium, which is super useful for a lot of things. You can make the De deuterion fuel rods out of it which produce 600 mj and have a fuel chamber efficiency of 300 percent or you can also turn it into strange matter which is used for a variety of different things that are closer to end game so it's super handy to have way more deuterium than it is hydrogen now i have a really simple setup over here that i want to show you all for processing it through your fractionators and it's infinitely extendable as far as you want to extend it. So what you want to do is off of the main line here that you have all of your hydrogen going into if you are burning it. So for example here, I have it all going into these power stations. What I would do is place down one of my splitters here. I have a slightly different setup than what I'm showing you here so I'm not going to mess with it but I can demonstrate for you relatively easy how you would do this so pretend this is our belt here going in through here what you would do is set this so that it holds priority here so it will make sure that all of your hydrogen goes here first and goes into your thermal area so that you can burn it when that gets backlogged then you have it go to this way so it'll go through here first and then if it gets backlogged, it'll start processing it through this one here. The secondary one here is where you want to set up your fractionator system that I'm about to show you now. So we're going to pretend for demonstration purposes that this is coming off of that power area over here. So it comes over here and it follows down and then it comes to this system that I have set up here. Now, once again, you can expand this with as many fractionators that you want. So all I have to do is just put another one in line, extend the belt, continue on, and then loop the belt back around to the front here. And then from the front, all I have to do is continue to feed all of them to the left or to the right, depending on how you're looking at it, and just connect the belts together. So I would bring belts off the, the next one that I have, that if I place another one down and connect it in like so. And then every time they output a deuterium, it's always gonna go this way and end up in our tank over here. This system is extremely efficient for the pure fact that it ensures that you are processing all of your hydrogen that you have possible in this system into deuterium. Because if we take a look here, you can see there is only a 1% chance when it does the thing that we actually get a deuterium out of it. So what happens is, is the hydrogen comes in this side, gets processed, comes out this side, if you don't get a deuterium. Same thing here, and then it's gonna happen again. So then it passes it on to this one, and this increases our chances. So this system here, every time a hydrogen, a single hydrogen passes through this system completely, it has a 2% chance to become a deuterium. And that's gonna get even higher of a chance if I was to extend this even further down this way. So after it comes out this side, we don't want it bunched up in here because if it gets bunched up in here and you end up with too much hydrogen in the system, what will happen is, is it will stop working and say that it's stacking instead. So you don't want that. You want it to always say that it's working. 
when the, the way that the system's running now, it'll always just bounce around between six and seven. I love this run for like the longest time, probably 20, 30 minutes, just sitting here watching this thing. And it never went above six and seven. And the reason that is, is because the whole thing is made out of tier two belts, except for this little spot right here. And the reason we have this set up like this is because we have a tier two sorter pulling from our main line, our backup line. Now remember, this line's coming off of our burn line. So you're constantly gonna be burning and then your additional, if your burn line backs up, is gonna be shunted into this line here. Then you have this extended three away. That way it takes time to travel back and forth. You don't want it to be instant because it's gonna to try to cram them in there faster. So I specifically have it at its max length because you can see it's only going to make one trip a second. So that keeps anything from getting like a little too screwy and, and keeps everything running smoothly. You may be able to have it closer. I didn't try it closer. I just had the setup like this. It works like this. So I'm telling you to do it like this. If you want to play around with this system, if you can make it more efficient, by all means, let me know down in the comments if you were able to make it more efficient. So then we have that connected to a small section here of tier one belt. And the reason I have the tier one belt here is because it moves slower than the tier two. So it causes it to bunch up here. And the only time that this can put one down here is when one has processed in the system, which leaves a gap over here. So once you have that gap in the line here, then it can go ahead and put another one. As you see there, it just dropped another one in. Right now, it cannot drop another one in. This ensures that your system can't get overloaded. So there can only be so many on the system in the system at a time because of the way that this is set up here with having this tier one belt causing them all to bunch up like they are. So even though we just had those couple placed on there, if we take a look here, you can see it's still bouncing between six and seven, still bouncing between five and six on this one. And if I wanted to extend the system after I have it all set up, all I have to do is come over here. I just take that out and then I can come over here. I will remove the belt from here and then remove the belt from here. And then I can drop down another fractionator so I'm just going to place it down like so, grab my tier two belt, drag my tier two belt over there, drag my tier two belt out here, take my tier two belt around and then connect it back into the system. And then I want to take my tier two belt from here and then I want to bring it out and bring it over and connect it to this line here. Now, even though that all got bunched up there, did you see how it all got bunched up? Let me show you again. Let me... Let me just delete this. Let's delete this belt right here if it'll let me. So we'll just delete that belt there and watch. It'll get all bunched up. Now, all of that is currently inside this fractionator and you can see it just says product stacking and it won't actually do the thing. It's not doing the thing right now. It's not gonna, it's not actually working. So now if I take this and I connect it here and I connect it back out to here and I let it funnel through once it comes out there and it hits this spot here, it'll spread all back out again and they'll all go back to working. Working, working, and working. Now, if we connect this back here so that we can continue to put new items into the system, so we're just gonna connect that like that. It's gonna fill these belts back up, but they're only gonna fill up so much till it gets to the point here where it can't insert anymore. So we're just going to let it go for a minute. Okay, now it's got to the point where it's slowed down and it stopped. And you can see here, six and seven, six and seven, six and seven. They're all working just fine, making sure that this whole line eventually turns into deuterium for us. See, it left a gap here, so it's going to be able to place one. Places one, and there you go. Right now, burning hydrogen and turning it into deuterium are the two best ways I can figure out how to deal with the additional hydrogen. Um, you can also turn it into the fuel rods, and I do have a setup here that's doing that as well. 
but eventually it gets to the point where you're going to have deuterium and it's better to use the deuterium canisters for power for powering your mech because that's what I use this for is just powering my mech. It's actually better because you get more energy out of these and you have to, which means you have to make them less because if you take a look at this, this not only, this also takes the titanium. So you have to funnel titanium into these and they're not as efficient. Now, granted the deuterium fuel rod takes more resources and it's a little more intensive but they last way longer now you could set up a whole thing where you're funneling titanium into a bunch of these and you're using these to turn all of your hydrogen into the fuel hydrogen fuel rods and then you're putting that into your furnaces but the hydrogen fuel rods are going to burn way slower which means that you could have a situation where you have an abundance of power and you're not burning through your hydrogen as fast even though it takes what i think 10 to make one of these and a five it takes five so even though that it takes five to make one of these they're more efficient so you're going to be burning less and less often so you actually want the more inefficient version if you're trying to just get rid of it without just deleting it because you can just delete it that's your absolute third option if your whole system is backed up you make sure once again you have your hydrogen in these tanks all you have to do is delete a tank and replace it. So if I had a tank on top of here and this tank was completely full of hydrogen and I just needed to void it just to get rid of it and I did not care if I was deleting it, I can just delete this tank and then place it right back to fill up again. That will delete all of the hydrogen that's inside of it. But I think that's a really bad idea unless you just have so much of it that you don't know what else to do with it. I think you're better off turning it into the deuterium because the deuterium can be used for a lot of handy stuff, specifically the strange matter, which you need to make the gravitation lens, which you can use to make the warps, the space warpers. It's also used in your gravity matrix which means you're going to need a lot of it at some point later on in the game. So you may as well start stacking up on as much of the deuterium as you can early game. All right, well, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out other videos. And I don't just cover this game. I cover all kinds of different games. So you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Elite Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.